You're listening to Pet World Radio, and this is the Addictive Reef Keeping with Tyler Johnson. Stay tuned for live chats, expert guests, tips and tricks, product reviews, and many more topics. Well, hey guys, Tyler Johnson back again for another update on my multi-tank system. Now, a couple videos ago, I did a uh, video on Tyler Johnson's monthly coral sale. And uh, basically, I, I put up five frags for sale for my subscribers, my viewers, and uh, just for fun. And I used uh, one of the buyer's video footage and, uh, you know, got to do a video with another subscriber and YouTuber in the video. So in that video, guys, I basically showed you guys a picture of my 33-gallon frag tank that uh, was basically empty, didn't even have the light rail over it or uh, anything on it uh, mechanically. And uh, I told you guys that I would do a video when it's all done, show you guys how it worked and uh, how it looks. And uh, it's done, guys. It took quite a while to uh, finish this all up with how much I work and things like that. But uh, I did the best I could, guys, to get it done. There is uh, a few other things that I'm not done on the tire system. It's probably about 98% done. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at my 40 breeder up close. You guys are going to see a big difference in there. Things are growing fast. And uh, I have tons more room on my sand bed now. And then uh, I'll just kind of go over this tank, how I plumbed it in here. A lot's changed, guys. I did run this whole entire setup right here off of a Mag 9. Now I'm running it off the Jabo DC 3000, which is now located in this tank. So this, guys, is technically my sump. And, uh, you know, everything's backwards. All of my uh, equipment is above the tanks. So uh, I'll show you guys that real quick. Let's go check out the 40. Well, here's the 40, guys. As you guys can see, it's definitely growing a lot. I don't know if the, from the last video, this SPS right here was, I think all this right here is all new growth and all that's new growth. My Valida has just gone nuts. My uh, $500 E-Flow is just totally tabling out. Everything's doing great, guys. I couldn't ask anything more out of my tank for uh, just doing simple water changes and calc. Um, believe it or not, guys, I run this whole entire tank, even from day one, solely on calc and water changes. And by the looks of it, guys, I get great SPS color and growth. Um, and that's the same with all of my LPS and uh, my Montes, everything. So calc is the way to go. It's super simple. You don't even really have to test for it. Once you get it going, it's just kind of... Uh, what your tank is used to and uh, it works for me guys mm -hmm. I like I say all the time guys there's a million ways to take care of a reef tank find what works for you and do it and uh, that's why I try to tell everybody you know there's not one right way to take care of a tank the only difference is now guys is I'm adding a calcium reactor to my system um, it's just something that I chose to do I, I really want more coralline algae um, I don't want just enough to keep my corals alive I, I want that extra boost and uh, we'll see how it works for me. But uh, other than that, guys, everything in this tank is doing super good. I got a lot more room now that I was able to move some frags over to the frag tank. But uh, the biggest difference of the tank, guys, is there's no float switch here anymore. I used This used to be my sump on how my system works. Um, I'll explain it to you guys in a second. But uh, the water level in this would evaporate instead of the, the, the sump evaporating. And uh, I had to figure out how to hook this 33-gallon tank when it's six inches lower and my sump is, you know, all the way above it. So uh, it took a little bit of uh, thinking, probably a good two and a half months of thinking, but I got it figured out. So as you guys see that water that's coming in right now, that is uh, coming down through a toilet flap that I have attached uh, a little float ball to. And uh, after it fills up a three-gallon chamber up above, it'll uh, dump into this system and then this system also has two drains let's go check those out so before guys the system used to run off of a uh, external pump behind this tank and this was actually the intake for the pump and over here 
you'll see this drain right here. This used to be the outlet for the AKA closed loop. So basically I had a closed loop here. So the pump was, the Mag 9 was recirculating this water and it was also sending up water to the sump up above where the protein skimmer is and the algae scrubber is and my 12 gallon long anemone tank. So I had to figure out a way to drain this tank or whatever. It, it, it took a lot of thinking and I just came up with the idea of uh, turning them both into drains. So uh, this is a half inch drain and this is a half inch drain. They're both open drains and uh, luckily they don't put a lot of bubbles into my frag tank. So uh, let's go ahead and check out where these pour in. All right guys, so this is the inch and a half drain that comes out of the uh, half inch drain. I basically just have this pipe 90 up over here on this uh, 40 breeder and the uh, half inch drain just pours into it and this is just uh, it's just held up by some straps so this is not an airtight drain there it's open on the other end and uh, that allows for faster flow out of my tank since I just have half inch holes there because of the initial build so half half of the water runs through this and half of the other water runs through this which is three-quarter tubing and it's uh, a solid a solid uh, connection so they're they're uh, airtight inside and uh, it's not as fast as this drain right here the only other thing that we can talk about that makes this all work is the Jabo DC 3000 now uh, I really like this pump it's actually cooled my tank down two more degrees and uh, I'm sure I'll see a significant difference on my uh, power bill I believe it uses half of the wattage that my Mag 9 used. So uh, let's go check out how I have that installed and how it now, works. As you guys can see, I got my Jabo DC pump located right here in the center of my tank. Now, uh, it took a lot of thinking to do this too, guys, because this tank was already drilled six times. So I kind of had to come up with a way to utilize all of those holes for this system. So I'll try to go over that briefly. I'm trying to make this video as fast as possible because there's so much more to talk about um, in the long run of this tank. But uh, basically, I just put a strainer on the end of my uh, Jabo pump. It plumbs out to one inch. And then on the back side of the tank, guys, it actually splits and some of the flow goes back into this tank and the rest of the flow goes up to the sump. So I'll show you guys the sump real quick and uh, how that all works. All right guys, so this is the first stage of my filtration system on my multi-tank system. So as you guys can see, I got a 12-gallon uh, long here, which is above the 40-gallon tank, and uh, I got these two tanks behind there. Now you guys want to see where the Jabo ends up going first stage. It's right here, guys. I go to my skimmer section first, and the reason I do this is, uh, you know, I, if I had a different setup, I wouldn't do it this way. I'd actually have my skimmer last, but uh, I let my skimmer take all the fish food, anything that uh, drains down to the middle tank, um, detritus-wise, everything. I just let my skimmer handle first because I did have a frag tank on the other end, and uh, I wasn't really wanting it to be a huge mess over there. But uh, anyways, this is where the water goes, guys. Goes into this tank, obviously gets skimmed out, and then it goes into the back of another 20-gallon tank. Let's go check that tank out. All right, guys, so this is the other 20-gallon tank. So the uh, remainder of the water that's in the protein skimmer chamber pours into this tank right here. And it can do one or two things. Um, that water can either go into this Rio, I can't remember what size this is, and uh, basically go into my 12-gallon tank, and then that just gets uh, recirculated back into the system. Or the water can go down my algae scrubber. All right, guys, so this is where my water goes. This is uh, one of the other main filtrations that I have in my system. This is my algae scrubber, and uh, basically I just let the water waterfall down an acrylic sheet, and I have a needle point plastic um, fabric mesh, or whatever you want to call it, down there, and uh, I grow microalgae on there. Now microalgae, guys, is an excellent nutrient exporter, ten times more powerful or uh, more efficient than macroalgae. So uh, you don't need a very uh, big space in your sump or another tank to accommodate a, even a large tank. Now, when this tank fills up with water, the toilet flapper right there 
will open up and uh, those are those bubbles that you saw down in my 40 gallon tank. So that's pretty much how the system works. And you know, I was just trying to basically build a system that uh, I could do everything that I love in a small footprint and uh, it kind of looked kind of like furniture for the most part. I'm kind of going more for an industrial look over here as you guys can see. I'll go ahead and show you guys what I've done with these uh, two little things that we got right here. So I basically got this for fragging and I don't know guys, mainly for looks. I just think it looks really cool. But uh, it's really cool to get super close when you got things to do. And then I also ended up adding a uh, PAR 38 50 watt bulb here for uh, just really up close um, fragging and good lighting. So that's kind of what I was going for. It kind of had this whole scientist kind of look kind of thing to it. Um, obviously I'm not done. I got more stuff that I'm going to be adding here. And uh, I also have a little bit of a uh, reconstruction on the way I have this set up. I, I've kind of um, am debating on making a, a uh, waterfall algae scrubber here where I can house my new protein skimmer. But uh, I'm not exactly sure if I'll be able to uh, accommodate that with this, the way this system's set up. It, it just might be too much work. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about what I got up here, guys. Obviously, I got my calcium reactor here since you guys can see the uh, regulator and the uh, CO2 tank and then I have my Delta KM 500 Calxter things freaking awesome um, there are they are a lot of money I got a great deal on mine but um, they're all handmade some of the best work I've seen in the industry and their motors last almost a lifetime um, compared to what else is out there so they're super nice um, very well constructed and I can rely on it. So uh, let's go ahead and check out how I have that installed. It's it's kind of uh, one of the first ones I've ever installed. Alright guys, so basically I have it screwed down here so it doesn't tip over or fall and uh, I have a single doser right here and I'll get into that in just a moment. I'll just show you guys the tubing and everything and how I have it laid out. Um, basically I installed a check valve here and I installed a check valve here Basically, water enters into here. This is fresh RO, guys. Um, some people run these through their top off. I run mine on a timer, so I know every single day my system's going to get a, a half a gallon of fully saturated calc. And by achieving that with a calc stir, it's super simple, guys. Most of the units out there stir your calc all day long. Some people uh, don't have that luxury because maybe it's only a 1200 hour uh, motor and they might run it for 5 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes a day. So I run mine for 15 minutes and it does it right after it's done dosing. So I know that my tank's fully, I know the calc's fully saturated because I've been using calc for the last 4 years in a 5 gallon bucket with no pump. I stir it one time and I'm done and uh, I had great results for it. So this is even better. Basically at 9 o'clock my uh, doser turns on and pumps water into here and as it fills up there's a 90 here it slowly siphons itself off one drip at a time or two drips at a time or however fast you want it and then it rides down this pipe this is actually my calcium reactor you guys can see it dripping right there right now or maybe and uh, that's just a different this pipe right here is just for adding liquids to my tank so I'll show you guys the bottom so here's the bottom of the three-quarter pipe and I just kinda put some lock line on here and this is how I monitor my calcium reactor and my calc doser so around nine o'clock I can hear the doser going off I, gl I glance over here and make sure that I see a white cloud going in the water and that I see a stream and not a drip the drip you guys are seeing right now is from my calcium reactor. Obviously I'm not running my regulator right now, but I am running water through it on a siphon and uh, I'm just testing it out, working the kinks out of it before I turn it on. But uh, that's how I add my uh, calc to the system, guys. That's pretty much how I take care of this whole entire tank. Um, I don't do a lot of water changes um, as much as you guys would think. I actually only change out five gallons on Sundays. And uh, I think that's a pretty small amount for a tank that's almost 100 gallons altogether. And uh, I don't know, it's just easy if I keep things simple. 
and st and uh, stable. Uh, that's the biggest thing on uh, my success is doing the same thing over and over. If you guys notice, when you first start up a saltwater tank, it's just gorgeous. Everything's growing great, and then maybe six months, maybe even two months down the road, stuff starts going downhill. But in those first two months, there was quite a quite a bit of new water in the tank. Um, the parameters were all perfect. So doing those water changes kind of stimulates or simulates that same thing. So I try to keep my tank like it's brand new, and by doing it, I do water changes. So hopefully I can get away with doing less when um, my system is a little bit more established. So let's go ahead and check out the tank, guys. I got a, a, a couple updates for you guys I'm super pumped about, and uh, I'll show you guys what my plan is. This is where I'm going to be holding my uh, monthly coral sales, and I will be selling locally. I will have an IP camera right here looking at my tank. You guys will be able to log into that IP, so zoom around the tank, and zoom in, check out whatever the ID tag is, and you can see the coral currently up for sale. What you see what is what you get, as real as it gets in my opinion. So that's something new that's coming on the tank. Another new thing is I have a protein skimmer and it's coming from Taiwan from a very good friend that uh, approached me about a month ago and uh, it's just awesome what he's created. He has basically created a skimmer that uh, has one more effect in it and that's called the tornado. And uh, I'll show you guys a quick pic of it or, or maybe a quick clip of it right here and uh, you'll see how this thing moves. But it's my new skimmer that I'm putting on this system and it is insane looking. It uh, kind of has the look of a vertex skimmer. So uh, we'll check that out next. That's probably gonna be one of my next videos. That thing's gonna be here um, any day now. And uh, I'll fill you guys in on Facebook as well, too. If you guys don't follow me on Facebook, just click the links below. Check out my Facebook group. But uh, other than that, guys, another cool thing is, as you guys can see, I kind of have my system set up kind of ghetto. Um, as you guys can see, I kind of have different racks and things installed here. Um, some of these things are actually mother colonies that need to go back into the other tank, but um, I'm just pulling them out of there for investigation reasons or whatever. I just have stuff I got to do with it. But I'm actually converting this tank over to an all natural ceramic fragging system. And basically, there's not going to be a, any plastic in the tank, there's not going to be any uh, standard frag plugs. Everything's going to be natural with natural uh, painted coralline on it natural looking plugs the plugs actually inset into the rock and uh, magnetic rocks that go onto the glass and I think it's really gonna change the way this tank looks I think it's really gonna make the corals pop under their natural colors and uh, you guys can check out the link down below that's actually my buddy Michael Stefan from Nature's Replica he builds a lot of things out of ceramic for the fish industry and uh, he's moving over to salt, and I appreciate that because I'm uh, I, I'm truly inspired by his work. It's uh, definitely he definitely takes a lot of time when it comes to uh, making these things, and to have a little piece of that in my tank is going to be even cooler. So stay tuned for those guys. Um, I'll have pricing and stuff like that for all these because you guys got to see some of the stuff that he's making. Oh, actually, you know what, guys? Hold on. Why don't I just post some pics right now, and you guys check them out. Right, guys I hope you guys enjoyed those frag plugs I really like those little discs those little biscuits things with a little bit of a purple in the center those things are really cool I look forward to putting some zoanthids on those but other than that guys this is my tank I hope you guys enjoy um, I hope I didn't waste too much of your time I was trying to uh, get through it as fast as possible there's a lot to talk about on this system but uh, stay tuned guys on the updates I got an update on the green leaves 150 gallon custom tank will be adding uh, a bunch of uh, inhabitants to that tank and really checking out how well it's taking off so take care guys check us out on Facebook at addictive reef keeping I believe we're one of the largest saltwater groups on Facebook and you can get any question answered 
probably in about a minute. It's that fast, guys. I think there's almost 8,000 members in there, and uh, I do most of my uh, research right there. And it's not um, not a thing about research. I guess it's more or less getting the information from someone who's more credible than, than someone that's hiding behind a username. I guess that's how I can put it. But uh, take care, guys. I look forward to seeing your guys' tanks on Facebook. Post a comment down below if you guys have any questions. I, I know I skipped over a lot of things. And uh, most of all, guys, happy reefing.